Hi, my name is Gordon Crenshaw. I'm a principal system engineer with Progress Software. And today I'm going to show you how you can download and install Spark so that you can use it with the ODBC and JDBC Spark SQL Preview Driver. First, what you'll want to do is go to the Hortonworks Spark landing page, which is hortonworks.com slash Hadoop slash Spark. And on this page, they talk about what Spark is. But over on the right, there are links, one, to download and configure Apache Spark Technical Preview, and the link to download the Hortonworks Sandbox that you can install Spark on. If you haven't already done so, you can click on the link to download the Sandbox and use the instructions in the previous video to set that up. Let's click on the Apache Spark Technical Preview and see what they have to say. So when you go to the web page, they give you some information about the version of Spark that they're providing to be used on their sandbox. It's version 1.2, which is supported by the DataDirect drivers. And then they give you some system requirements of the sandbox that in order for the Spark to be run on that particular sandbox, they require that you use Hortonworks Hadoop 2.2 sandbox. Next, they give you instructions for downloading and installing the Spark Tarball. Now, they actually give you the instructions to download it locally and then copy over the Tarball to the Spark cluster, but we're actually going to combine those two steps into a single step and just download the Tarball directly onto the Hadoop cluster. So let's do that now. What we'll need to do is first bring up a terminal window and we'll need the IP address for the Hadoop distribution. And we can go back over to the one that we have started, and it gives you the IP address on the landing page, which is 172.16.57.142. And they give you actually the instructions of which command you should be using to log in, which is SSH, and log in as root. Let's do that. Type SSH root at 172.16.57.142 and hit enter. Prompts us for the password and the password for the Hortonworks sandbox is Hadoop in all lowercase h-a-d-o-o-p. Hit enter. Now from here we want to see what our current working directory is so we'll type pwd and we're in the root directory which is fine and we can even do a directory listing to see what files are in there and it looks like some syslogs, a configuration file, and some startup scripts. So we'll just use the default location for installing Spark software. So we'll go back to the web page and we'll copy the wget command and we will paste that into our terminal window and it's going to download the Spark 1.2 software locally onto the machine. Great, now that it's done, we need to untar this tarball. They give you the command to do that, so we'll just copy it. And we will paste that into our terminal window and hit enter. And it goes through the process of untarring the file. If we do a listing, we'll see that we have our tar file, but it also created a directory called spark-1.2 with the long number. And that's where our software is. And it says that this directory where the tarball is expanded is spark home. Now in the instructions, they don't tell you that you have to create an environment variable called spark home, but I wasn't able to get the Spark distribution to work without creating the Spark home environment variable. So let's do that. We'll go back to our terminal window. We will say export Spark underscore home equals, we'll say root slash and the directory. We'll copy that and paste it and hit return. We can type set just to make sure that the environment variable was created and it was. Okay, next back to our instructions. We need to set the environment variable yarn c-o-n-f-d-i-r 
So we will just copy that command and we will paste that into our terminal window and hit enter and we can type set and see that that environment variable was created as well. Great. Now the next instructions say that we need to create a file that's in the Spark Home CONF directory called spark-defaults.conf and add these two settings. So let's do that. So go back to our terminal window and we will go into our Spark directory and then we will go into a CONF directory and if we do a directory listing here, we see that there is already a file called sparkdefaults.conf with a .template extension. So why don't we just use that file and we'll make a copy of it, leaving off the template word from the end of the name. So we'll say copy spark-defaults.conf.template to spark defaults.conf and we'll list that out and we'll see that that file was created so now we will edit this file using vi spark default conf and it's got some comments in here of how you can use this properties file so we'll just go down to the very end and hit o for insert Go to the web page and copy those two lines, and we will paste them into the file, and we will save and quit. And then we can type more and the file name just to make sure that the changes were made correctly, and they were. Great. Okay, now the next thing in the instructions is to run a couple examples. You can do that if you want to, but running the examples is not necessary in order to get Spark configured. We'll skip those two and we'll go to the next section, which is running Hive. So before we run any of the Hive examples, we have to create a hive-site.xml file. So let's create that file. So first we need to go into the Spark Home COM directory. We should still be in that directory and we will use our VI editor to create the file hive-site.xml and we'll type I for insert and we will just copy all the information that's in that box and we will paste it into that file and we will quit and save it. And now we can type more hive site.xml in order to see that our information was saved correctly and it was. Great. Now the last thing we need to do is we need to launch the Spark server. And to do that, we'll scroll down to the section that talks about using the Spark SQL Thrift Server for ODBC and JDBC access. And it says to start the Thrift Server from Spark Home, we're going to execute this command. One thing I want to point out is at the end of the command, it says port equals 10,001. That's the port number that the Spark Thrift Server is going to be listening for incoming requests. And we'll use that port number when we configure the ODBC and JDBC driver. Let's copy that command and it said to go to Spark Home. So we're actually in the CONF directory, so we need to go back one directory. Then we will paste that command and hit return. And it will execute the command, but it takes a few minutes for the port number or the server to actually load up and start listening on that port. So we can use the netstat command I grab 10,001 and see if that keep executing that command until we see the port number is now listening. We'll execute it again and we'll execute it again just to see if it's listening and now it is. So now this Spark service is running 
we can use the ODBC and or JDBC driver to connect to that Spark service and execute queries.